Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you watched the previous video about VPC and you know what does the VPC contain, how the VPC will be. That is nothing but VPC is nothing but a virtual data center. That is nothing but a isolated virtual data center provided by AWS to you or any other users. Okay. So now the question is, now I am expecting to create a VPC in my AWS account. Then what are the things that I need to provide for creating my VPC in AWS account? Basically, you need to provide two things. First one is name and second one is header range. So while creating VPC, what are the two things that you need to provide? VPC name that you want to put and second one is v cider block cider so don't worry i'll explain about this cider so why this vpc name we need to provide in order to identify your vpc in a particular region you need to provide some name right yes for that you need to provide this vpc name so what does this cider sir this cider stands for classless interdomain routing. What is that? Classless interdomain routing. So don't worry about uh, the full form. So just focus on how this CIDR block will look like. The CIDR block will look like 10.0.0 forward slash 32. Whereas what is this 10.0.0? 10.0.0.0. This represents your network IP address. This represents IP address of your network. So by using this, you can specify your IP address of your network. Whereas this forward slash 32 represents total number of that means how many places are blocked this represents number of bits masked in your network number of bits masked in your network so don't worry i'll explain both so what does this mean number of bits masked in your network so let's say i have provided my cider block will be like this then how many ip address do i get is only one ip address that is if i provide my cider range is this then i got one ip address only that is 10 0 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 so why only i got one ip address because we are blocking 32 bits. What is this 32 bits, sir? Here you can see only 1, 2, 3, 4. Only 4 values, right? But you are saying 32 bits. Actually, your range, your range will start from basically 0 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 till 225 dot 225 dot 225 dot 225 so from 0 .0 0.0.0.0 till this much of range of ip values you can able to use naturally now let's further see this so what does this 225 indicates this 225 is your binary number this 225 is your decimal number so how computer will save this this computer will save this in the form of binary value. That is nothing but eight ones. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like this, your computer will save this two twenty. Actually, the IP address are available from zero point zero point zero point zero till two fifty five point two fifty five point. 255.255 .255. so these many ip addresses 
are available to you and if you take only last digit if you take only last digit then you can see the 255 you can represent it by using 8 bits what 8 bits right yes so let's say i have only one bit available that is all the bits are filled you can assume this 255.255.255.255 as in binary format as like this so you can assume it like this here for this first 255 these all 11s and you can see on top of dot i put dot so like this your binary data will be represented okay so like this you can assume now let's say i have let's say i want only one ip address i want only one ip address so totally how many bits i have totally how many bits i have i have one two three four four eights are what 32 so totally i have 32 bits right yes so total number of bits are 32 total number of bits are 32 32 bits now what i have written here in this particular example you can see in this particular example i have written like this that is 10.0.0.0 so this is my network address and this is what how many how many number of bits we are masked this 32 represents what how many number of bits we are masked so now you can see how many bits i am masking 32 so total number of binary bits i have is 32 so let's say i have masked all these so I, I am not allowed to change even a single bit also. So can I say how many IP addresses do you got? Only one, right? That is this. So let's say I want to remove mask for one bit. That is I want to mask for 31 bits. So what does this represent? This represents, if we do like this, then this represents 31 bits are blocked so for that let us write the binary format of this you can see 10.0.0.0 right so if you write this in binary format 10 will be represented as 0101 and so each each block will be nothing but 8 bits right yes so already four bits are completed already five bits are completed another six seven eight so eight bits are completed for ten so we represented ten only only ten we are represented now let us put dot here and let us represent this zero so for this bit how many bytes i can able to represent eight bytes one two three four five six seven eight okay i represented this zero as well now i want to represent the next zero that is nothing but eight bytes one two three four five six seven eight okay so first we need to represent our data in the form of bytes one two three four five six seven eight so now I represented my data in the form of bytes. Now what we are saying, 31 bytes are masked, 31 bits are masked, 31 bytes are masked. So here you know, here you know, one byte is equals to how many bits? 8 bits. So let me write that important point here. One byte is equals to how many bits? 8 bits. So now first you represent your network network ip address in the form of bits so now you can see i represented my network ip address in the form of bits you can see how it will be i represented this byte in the form of bits you can see 8 bits i represented 
I represented this byte in the form of bits. So like this, I represented all my bytes. Now you have to mask up to how many network mask values that you provided. So since we provided 31, that is nothing but number of bits you have masked for your network. So now calculate 31 bits exactly and mask them. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So you can see up to here, all my bits are masked. That is nothing but all my bits are blocked. Only the leftover bits are how many? One bit. So by using this one bit only, we can able to, only this one bit is variable. Only this one bit is variable. Except all the bits are masked now. So can, so now what we need? We need total number of IP address available. Total number of IP addresses available. Right? Yes. So how to get it? Since only one bit is available, in place of here, you can able to write zero or else you can able to write one. Right? Yeah. So let, let us write that here. So this is one possible value and this is another possible IP address. Only these two IP addresses are possible. So in simply we can say it as 10.0.0.0. Right? Yes. So whereas this will be in the form of bytes that will be 10.0.0.1. So since only last, only last bit is available for us. So we can able to put 0 or 1, right? Yes. In place of that, we can able to put 0 or 1. So let's say like this, how many bits we have, how many IP addresses we got for this CIDR block range. We got only two IP addresses. How many IP addresses? We got only two IP addresses. So like this, you have to calculate number of IP addresses. Sir, is there any simplified way? Yes, there is a simplified way to calculate number of IP addresses available. To calculate total number of IP addresses available, you have a formula that is 2 in 2 power, 2 power, 32 minus num cider block mm, number of bits you want to mask. Let's say this 31 as n or else you can say you can write this only. That is number of bits, number of bits masked in your network that you need to provide here. That's it. So let's analyze it with two examples. So you can see here, we provided 31 as for this, for this cider block, we provided 31 as number of bits masked in our network, right? Yes. So let's calculate number of IP address we get for this. That is two power, two power 32 minus 31. That is nothing but two power one. So what is the two power one value? Two power one is nothing but two, right? So you have two only, you have only two IP addresses available. That means you can see here, total number of IP addresses available is two. You can see last two values. That is 10.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.1. You can even, you can even check with the previous value that is 32. So if you put 32, then it will be here 32 minus 32. So 32 minus 32 is nothing but zero. Two power zero is what? One. So you got only one IP address. If you put the cider block, the cider block number of bits you mask will be 32. Then you got only one. So if you put one, then you got here one and you got total number of available marks, total number of available IP addresses are two. So like this, you simply remember IP addresses. So total number of IP addresses you got that you need to remember. So I am just writing it here. 
So I am just highlighting this point so that you can able to remember this. Right? Yeah. So I am highlighted this point. So let me. Yeah, I am highlighted this point. And you can see cider block. How it will be? You need to provide two things. What is that? Network IP address and num number of bits you want to mask in the network. Number of bits you want to mask in the network. So by using that, you can able to provide. So what this specifies, sir? What this whole cider block is specifying for me? So by using this cider block, can I say we can able to tell number of IP addresses? Yes. So total number of IP addresses available in that particular VPC, right? Yes. We can able to tell total number of IP addresses. We can able to tell by using this cyber block, we can able to tell total number of IP addresses available in VPC. In this particular VPC, total number of IP addresses available that we need that we can able to tell by using this cider block. So what are these IP addresses indicate, sir? Each and every IP address indicates one server or one resource. So you can represent each and every IP address by using a server or a resource. It may be a database server or it may be EC2 server or it may be application server or it may be web server or it may be storage service. So what are the server may be? So you can represent a server by using a single IP address. So what is your VPC? Your VPC is nothing but your collection of your servers that is nothing but a virtual data center right a isolated virtual data center so in order to represent that isolated virtual data center by using number of servers we can represent that by using cider block what does this cider block indicates total number of ip addresses so how it will be you can see like this it will be so here what is this this is nothing but your network IP address. So what is this? This represents number of bits masked in your network. So by using this, can you able to calculate total number of IP address available? Yes, we can able to calculate total number of IP addresses available by using this formula. That is 2 power 32 minus number of bits masked. So internally, how those many number of uh, IP addresses available for us, for us is like this. You can see the network IP address and the number of bits you have masked. So based on the number of bits you have masked, those many by based on the number of bits you have masked. So what are the IP address that you provided that is converted to that byte data is converted into bits. You can see after converting, it becomes 32 bit data. So after in this 32 bit data, Based on number of bits you masked, those many bits will be masked and other whatever the leftover bits, those can able to change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So like that, how many possible IP addresses we got. So those many hosts we can able to, we can able to put under this VPC. So I hope you understood this concept regarding VPC name and cider block as well. So now let's move on with lab. That is how to create this VPC from lab. In this video, let us see how to create a VPC directly from AWS lab. That is hands-on lab. So for this, I log in into my AWS account. So now you can see under services, you can see the option of VPC or else if you haven't found, you can see under all services you found it. That is VPC under the V session it may be. So you can see under V you have VPC. You can open it directly from here or else if you don't want to that much then click here under search 
under search you just enter vpc so that you say your service will be available you just click on it so that your vpc dashboard will open immediately so you can see my vpc dashboard opened you can see initially how many vpc available for me one so i'm just opening it so what is that vpc that is a default vpc while explaining itself i have explained you so you just click on it so that you can able to get the details of it as well you can see the tendency as default it's a default vpc yes it's a default vpc you can see here the option now so for the available vpc there is no name for it to identify it to identify that it's a default vpc you can see here default vpc yes so it contains how many ip addresses that also available here that means these many ip addresses it can able to hold so you can see the mask number of bits are how many 16 so what does it mean how many how many servers can i able to put in this vpc that is 2 power 32 minus 16 that is nothing but so let's calculate it what is that 2 power 32 minus 16 right so let's calculate here 2 power 2 power 32 minus 16. So 32 minus 16 is what? 16 only. So 2 power 16 is the value that I want to calculate. So let me open my calculator. So let us calculate 2 power 2 power 16. So you can see you can able to create how many how many servers 65536 65536 when if you are having if you are having you if you mask will be 16 then you can able to create those many ip addresses so now let us see how to create a vpc for this, you can see here an option is available that is create VPC. I'm just clicking here to create VPC. So you can see the options here. So it was asking me the name, the name of the VPC. Since it's a lab based VPC, I'm just writing my name as VPC one. So VPC only or VPC and more. So you can see here VPC is there under VPC. You can even able to create subnets and route tables as well. So let us consider with just creating VPC only since we have completed theory regarding VPC only. So now in order to identify my VPC, I need to provide my VPC name that is VPC one and IP addresses. You want IPv4 CIDR manually input or IPAM allocated address. So I am expecting with manual CIDR block input that is like this so i want i want how many ip addresses is i want let's say i want i am um, also expecting more ip addresses that is uh, 65000 like that let's say i want 65536 ip addresses so i am just clicking here 10.0.0.0 forward slash 16 that means those many IP addresses we got. So cider block concentration and tendency. And if you want, then you can able to add tags. That is up to 40, 50 tags you can able to add. So initially we have added one tag that is VPC one that is added here. So that's it. Just two things we have provided. Name of our VPC and cider block. What does the cider block represents? The cider block represents the number of, the number of servers or the number of servers which is present in your data center this represents now i want to create you can see even this must be in between forward slash 16 till forward slash 28 so this is an important point forward slash 16 and forward slash 28 so you can able to block from 16 from 16 ip, IP uh, from 16 bits to 28 bits only so let me create a VPC so that 
here you can see based on my specified IP address, I have created, a, it is created me a CIDR block. Now you can see CIDRs, that is this. So now you, you can see from your VPCs, you have two VPCs. That is, this is the default one and this is my created one. So you, you can see under default VPC, what is the option? No. So it's not a default VPC, it is created by you. So based on your provided CIDR block, those many IP addresses you got? Yes, those many IP addresses we got. And what are the name we provided that will be came here. So like this, very simple, you can able to create your VPC by providing the name as well as your CIDR block range. If you want to delete this VPC, you, you can see when the message that is you successfully created your VPC, that is this. If you want to delete this VPC, then just click here under the actions tab. You have an option called delete VPC. And here you need to re-enter delete so that it will be confirmed and deleted. Just click here delete. So you can see you successfully deleted the VPC that we just created. So like this, we can able to create our VPC and we can able to delete our VPC very easily. So I hope you understood this video. So this is about how to create your VPC and how to delete your VPC directly from AWS console. And this is a brief, this is all about CIDR block and what are the things that you need to remember while creating your VPC and how to define your CIDR block and how to check the required number of IP addresses that you can able to provide or not. So how to calculate how many IP addresses you got for the given CIDR block. So I hope you understood this video and you analyzed VPC creation and deletion from directly from AWS management console. So I hope this video is contentful. If you feel this video is contentful, then please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching again. See you back in the next video with another interesting topic. Until then, bye bye guys.